now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. I'm talking about Archipelago, which is a new game designed by Christopher Bollinger, who is one of my favorite designers because he did uh, Dungeon Twister and Earth Reborn, but this is nothing like those. This is a heavy, heavy Euro game. Um, and I know some of you are worried already that I'm going to trash the game, and I'll just come right up front here and say I, I enjoy this game. But one of the things I do want to make clear is that there is no way anybody should watch this video so that you can learn how to play the game because there is a lot going on in this game. So I'm just going to pick and choose some of the different things uh, ab about the game, and then I'll come back and give my opinion of the game overall. I mean, obviously, I already said I like it, but why? Here we go. This game is full of pieces. I mean, this is some of the things we have here. Then we have a whole thing up down here and over here, and there's a box that you need to have with the hexes that are going to form the board, and over there's pieces, and you actually keep these pieces in the box during the course of the game. I mean, there is a lot going on. So let's focus a little bit on some of the things and talk about them. Okay, here we have a couple markets, and in these markets, this is the local market, and this is the uh, foreign market, and there's different goods. We have fish and pineapples and cows and metal and wood and concrete or, or cement or whatever it is. And as these markets come and go, the cost of the different items is going to increase and decrease. Okay, that's not new for games. But at the, in the beginning of each turn, this is something I found interesting. If you notice that there's a little guy here, if there's more than, if there's enough fish to fill the market so that it hits this row, we will add another worker. If it goes all the way here, we'll add another rebel. And you can see that there's all kinds of workers and rebels over all of these. That's because over here, in the game, there's going to be a certain amount of meeples or people on the board, and that will equal the sum total population. As rebels are added to the game, we must be careful because if the rebels ever pass the meet the population, then everyone rebels and everyone loses. And you can see that when there's more people, we add more workers, but once there's enough people, rebels will be audit at automatically. And down here we have workers, and you can't let your worker population grow too much. I mean, as your workers increase, you're going to start getting tons of rebels, so you're going to need to get rid of those workers. <laughs> Not get rid of, but I mean, hire those workers and reduce that number. So that's what these charts are for. They'll be used a lot during the game. Down here is a turn order, which will be bid on each turn, and that's a big deal in this game, turn order. And here, there's some interesting things that you can buy over the course of the game. But before we get to those, let's talk about, to me, the most fascinating part of the game. In this game, you can decide if you want to have a short, also known as long, or a medium, also known as really long, or a long, also known as epic game. When you do that, you're going to give each player Let's say there's four players. Each of those players is going to get one of these cards. Now, what's really interesting about these cards is each card lists a victory condition for the game. Okay, so this victory condition is a victory condition that lasts for everybody. So this one here says everybody, for whoever has the most of these little exploration tokens at the end of the game is going to get three victory points. Whoever has the second most gets uh, two victory points. Whoever has the third most gets a victory point. Over here, this one says whoever's built the most churches gets three victory points. And over here, whoever has the most card buildings is going to get victory points. But you only know yours. But it affects everybody. Then, of course, I like this one here. This one here says, if the Rebels win, you win the game. So, this person wants the Rebels to win. And you got to be careful because you never know when someone like that is existing. Now, the top part tells you when the game is over. For example, here, this one says, when the, in a four-player game, when there's six of these cards out, uh, on, on the table, the game is over. This one here says when the three piles of exploration tokens are gone, the game's over. This one says when two of the piles of goods are depleted from the bank, the game's over. This one here says when five shipyards have been built, the game is over. So you know one of the end victory conditions. In fact, when it happens, you have to tell people. And you also know how to get victory points, one of four ways. Now, fortunately, that's not the only thing. At the beginning of the game, players are going to draw a card 
which is going to be out on the table. And this card here is a victory point condition that everybody knows. So for example here, whoever has the most wood at the end of the game is going to get four, then three, then two victory points. And so everyone knows two victory conditions and you know one ending condition. So it's very in interesting. Well, I mean, you can kind of guess what the other ending conditions are. The game, most of the game is going to take place around this board here, which is where you will be placing discs that you have. And as the game progresses, you might get more discs, but these discs will be placed in different spots to allow you to do different actions. Since most of those actions have to do with the map, let's go there. Once again, I like to talk about how stunning the artwork and pieces are in this game, although it makes me laugh that it looks like they took the ships from Settlers of Catan and the Meeples from Carcassonne. But at the beginning of the game, each player is going to have a chance to put out tiles on the board to increase the map. And so the map is going to increase as players are placing these different tiles, and you have to match the different, you know, the, the tiles that you're next to. Um, but you'll be able, everyone's going to be able to put out one. And then during the game, one of the actions you can take on that board is exploration. Exploration is a really interesting mechanic of the game because you can see the top tile and you'll say, I want that tile. Or you can say, I don't want that tile, I want the tile underneath it. You don't know what's on the other side and you don't know what tile's underneath it, but you can only pick one. And if you can't put it out and you have to put it out to where you, next to someone where you have people or boats and you also have to put it so it touches two tiles, so, you know, you're never quite sure. There's always a risk. But if you do successfully have an exploration, then you'll get one of these exploration things, which can be used maybe for points or for a wild good. Uh, but anyhow, when you also put it out, when you discover and explore, when you start the game, you'll have people on the board, which increases population. The game actually has you look. Let's see if I can focus in enough. There, you'll see, oh, there's a hut there on the board, and that hut means the worker increases by one. So every time you find more land, the number of workers increase. And you can take more actions uh, by having kids, which means if you have two people in the same spot, you can add a third one. Or instead of having kids, you can hire workers from the worker pool. Just pay money and hire as many workers as you can afford. You can build things with the different resources that you harvest. You can build boats. You can build different buildings like churches and towns and villages. And they all have different special abilities. Churches can reduce rebellion. A town will let you control everything in the same area. Uh, you can build a shipyard where you can trade goods in the different markets. You, can, you want these people and ships out there because one of the actions you can take on the board is, let's say I take a, a cow action, I can move each of these guys into one of those cow resources, and then I would get those tokens from the bank. And you say, you know, Vassal, you're not really making a lot of sense here. This is a lot of different mechanics. You're right. There is a lot of different mechanics. So let's take an overview of the whole game, in a sense. In the very first part of each turn, you will move all your people that are on the map off of the spots where they were doing whatever they're doing, whether they were uh, gathering goods or what have you. Then you will bid for turn order, which can be really important. Then you will deal with these boards and see the population effects and if rebels are increased or not. Then you have this weird thing called the balance of the archipelago, uh, archipelago, which means you look at these cards and these cards will tell you what kind of resources you need to pay. And everyone needs to pay these together. And if you don't pay them, the rebels are going to increase. And there's a good possibility sometimes that your workers will rebel and not even work. So you need to save goods for these. And you, you're kind of sure you'll, you know what's coming up, but you're never quite sure. After that is the action phase where everyone goes on this board and they can do all the different actions here, have kids, hire workers, get different resources, buy resources from the market, move people, explore tax people, which gives you a lot of money, but at the same time will cause the rebellion to go up by one. There's all sorts of things that you can do. And whew, after that, then you get to buy these cards. And these cards can be a big deal because uh, you'll buy these cards and on your turn you can buy one card and rotate one card or rotate two cards. Rotating means the card price will either go up or down depending on each card. And so when you buy these cards, these cards will allow you to take extra actions over the course of the game. In fact, some of the cards, like the the king card here is worth a victory point at the end of the game. Or over here, the pyramid, which is a wonder of the world, it adds, you know, to rebellion. But once you buy this card, if you manage to build it, you'll get two more victory points. In a game where there's not a lot of victory points, that can be a big deal. 
And so that is the game in a super, super small nutshell. There's a lot going on, a lot of pieces, a lot of different actions that you can do. You're exploring, you're getting resources, you're fighting off the needs of the people, you're watching the rebellion over there, you're buying cards that give you special actions, you're watching the market, and you're keeping an eye on your victory condition and trying to figure out where everyone else's victory condition is at the same time. <laughs> you can't play the game really from that. That that but I think though, if I explained it to you, if I sat down and said this is what we do, it isn't really that hard to teach, although it was hard for me to grasp. And I'll tell you, after my halfway through my first game, I was like, I don't really like this because there was parts of the game that were just brutal, brutal that said you need to feed your people now. And I was like, ah, but once I realized that, and I finished the first game, and I said, ah, and then I said, you know what, we got to try this again, because I wasn't sure I liked it or not. But after playing it more, I began to see how just the whole game comes together. There's a lot going on. I mean, there's risks and rewards, there's interaction between the players, there's all sorts of things going on, and you have to sit around and figure out what's the best actions for me to do. Because when it all comes down to it, you're really never sure what the victory conditions are. Now, some people don't like that. I think that's fantastic. You know two of the victory conditions, and in fact, you can play a variant where you just see all the victory conditions. But now, why do I like this game when I'm not a, always such a big fan of heavy Euro games? And I'll tell you why, because I insist that in the heavy Euro game, that the theme makes sense, and here it really does. Exploration can net you some really great profits. It lets you uh, find new land, you can discover new land, new resources, gives you uh, exploration tiles, it, it expands your area of dominance, but it's risky, and that makes sense. The markets, guys, they go up and down. The whole rebellion thing makes sense because as you tax people more, as you do that, the rebellion, people get incensed. As the worker pool goes up, people get rebellious because they don't have anything to do. And when you, the different uh, cards that are out there, the things that you can buy, the, the, the people and, and the, the, the churches bringing down rebellion, I mean, it all fits together. And then it's beautiful on top of that. The theme here is yet another trading type game uh, in the new world, I suppose, but it, it works really well. Everything just fits together like a glove. Now, I would caution you that there is a lot going on, and if you don't like to see all these pieces moving all over the place, you, you might not like this, but I found it very interesting because I think every game is going to be very different as those cards come out. Sometimes you get hit by disaster after disaster after disaster. Other times you sit there and you're like, ha ha, look at all the things I have, but always keeping an eye on that clock. Now, at the beginning of the game, I joked and said, that there was long, super long, and really, you know, epically long. It's really not that long uh, after playing it several times. I would say the game lengths are more an hour and a half, two and a half hours, you know, three, <laughs> three plus hours. So I'm still usually going to play the short game, although you could convince me to play the medium length game. Long game might be too long for me. But you know what? It's a very interesting game. It's a great production. I think a lot of people are really going to like this one. And it's a Euro th with a theme that I can get behind. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com. Shut the door! That's right. Shut it. Yeah. Yeah.